If you've ever been invited to be the composer for a film project, and uh, you knew that everyone else on the crew was getting paid, but they only offered you exposure, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hi, I'm Ryan Thomas with 8DO, and this video is the product walkthrough for the 8DO Warm Studio Solo Oboe, which is a solo oboe library that is uh, deep sampled that comes with over 20 different articulations, including an absolutely brilliant legato that is, is truly just to die for. And in this video, we are going to be exploring the instrument. I'm gonna be showing you the interface and how the basic controls work. And uh, then we're just gonna audition all the different articulations so that you can hear each one at least once. And then I'm just gonna show you how you can use those different articulations uh, to create some compositions here. I've got a couple examples and you'll be able to see all those different articulations in action. So what we're going to do is first explore the interface and the different patches. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. So this is the interface and you're probably going to be working the most with these two patches here. Uh, this one is going to load up an empty articulation set so you can populate it however you want to and build your own custom key switch using uh, any of the articulations in these four categories. Or if you just want to get a quick start, uh, you can just load up the prearranged key switch patch. And this is just already populated with a lot of the articulations that are gonna be the most commonly used when writing for oboe. And if you wanna change any of the articulations, uh, you can just double click on the slot and again, populate it with whatever articulation you wanna replace it with. And if you don't want to mess around with any key switching or you just wanna use a single articulation, uh, you can also just load up a single articulation patch. And it's a very streamlined interface. You don't have to go hunting for controls anywhere. There's no sub panels and sub sub panels. Uh, I like to link the dynamics and the expression. It just makes it a little bit more emotional and expressive. And in the instrument panel here, you've got the basic volume control, a pan control, and of course your mic position control. And all the way to the left is going to be your close mic, all the way to the right is going to be your room mic, and of course you can mix various quantities of both as well. Uh, so let's just start listening to these articulations, that's why we're all here, and uh, let's hear what the library is all about. And let's start off in the traditional articulations with the staccato. So this is going to give you a nice attack and kind of a medium short release. And the staccatissimo is gonna give you an attack and a very short release. And the Staccatissimo 2 is gonna give you a, a hard attack and a very, very short release. So Staccatissimo is gonna give you a ta, ta, ta. Staccatissimo 2 is going to give you a ta, ta, ta. So the air supply is actually being cut off by the tongue at the end of the note. So you get this nice clipped ending. And Marcato is going to give you an attack and a very long release. And these sustains are just going to be your vanilla sustains. And by the way, these don't respond to velocity like the short articulations do. Uh, these respond to the mod wheel. And of course the vibrato sustains are going to be sustains with a nicely evolving vibrato. Now 
Now this next articulation is the legato, which is just one of the main features of the library. You'll hear why in just a minute. And let's be honest, we all kind of judge a library by the quality of the legato. So let's go ahead and check it out. Just stunning, absolutely beautiful. Uh, this is going to be the whole note trill. This is the half note trill. Very ominous. Uh, okay, and that is gonna do it for the traditional articulations. Let's check out the arcs. And the arcs are another big feature of this series of libraries. So you have a very natural swell that's actually created by the player instead of crossfading between different dynamics layers with the mod wheel. So these are the short arcs. And these are the medium arcs. These are the long arcs. So delicate, I love these articulations. And let's take a look at the performance articulations. So these are basically the pre-recorded phrases. And we're gonna start with the measured tremolo, and this is tempo synced. Uh, so let's go ahead and check these out. And these are the tuplets. And these are the triplets. And these are the da da's. And finally, we have the effects. And we're gonna start off with the scoops. And these are the descending slow runs in fifths. And these are the ascending slow runs in fifths. These are the descending fast runs in fifths. These are the 
These are the ascending fast runs in fifths. These are the descending octave slow runs. These are the slow ascending octave runs. And these are the descending fast octave runs. And finally, these are the fast ascending octave runs. So now you've heard every articulation individually, uh, let's put them together so that you can see how they can be used in context. Now this first example is going to be featuring quite a few different articulations. Uh, so just refer to this contact instance here if you're wanting to know what's being triggered and when. So let's go ahead and check it out. So you can hear just how well the legato handles those really fast passages. And then we have this passage here, which is kind of a bit of a comedy thing. I just kind of wanted to see how many different articulations I could use with this. So let's check this one out. One more thing I would like to do is uh, just let you hear the differences between the different mic positions because they are quite different and it gives you just a nice variety of sort of sonic signature that you can choose from. You can place this instrument in an orchestral context as well as like in a really intimate studio context. So we're gonna start off entirely with the close mic and by the end of this excerpt, uh, you're just gonna be hearing the room mic. So you can hear how that affects the sound. Uh, obviously the room mic is gonna make it a lot more diffuse. And I found that when using this in an orchestral context, I actually have quite a bit of the close mic engaged as well um, because woodwinds are gonna struggle to speak through a mix if you've got you know the full orchestra playing. And I found that having more of the close mic tends to focus their sound and it just gives them a little bit more definition in the mix. So that is actually gonna do it for this walkthrough. Uh, I hope this was informative and you had a good time. Uh, I wanna thank you so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.